Hey guys, my name is Minas, and today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the eye. And as usual, I've broken it down into the most simple steps possible, so that if you have no idea what embryology is, you will by the end of this short video. And as usual, we're going to begin at the beginning with the blastula. The blastula is a result of multiplication of a bunch of cells from when a sperm fertilizes an egg. Now this ball of cells continues to differentiate. It goes in from the uterine tube and it goes into the uterine canal and it plants into the uterine wall and a process of gastrulation will form three germ layers. These germ layers are the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And you might have seen this pancake structure before. This is an oversimplification for this, where we have in blue the ectoderm, which will become skin, nervous tissue, and even the eyes. The mesoderm in red, which has three parts, a paraxial mesoderm, which are muscles or somites. The intermediate mesoderm, which forms gonads and kidneys. And the lateral plates. In green, we have the endoderm, and the endoderm contributes epithelium to the GIT, among other things. But for today's focus, we're only going to be talking about ectoderm because that's where the eyes derive from. Okay, so if you've seen my previous video on embryology of the CNS, you'll know that the CNS is one long tube, the central nervous system from ectoderm, and it's open at the top and at the bottom. And eventually, in a normal situation, this tube has to close at the top and close at the bottom. So when this occurs at around day 22, that's when we first start noticing the eye being developed. So around day 22, if we look at this picture, don't let this scare you. If we have this fetus or embryo that is crawled up like this, imagine I'm the embryo, and we, we're looking at it this way, and we slice it right here at the optic vesicle, and look at it this way, this is what we'll have. All right, wait a second. Looking at this, we have an optic vesicle, that's where the focus of this video will be because it has to do with the embryology of the eye. We also have an otic vesicle, not to be confused with the optic vesicle. The otic vesicle is a subject for another video, development of the ear. But let's leave that for now and only focus on the optic vesicle. So we slice this embryo here and looking at it this way, we will have this. So again, slice, pull, and at day 22, we have the forebrain in purple, which is still ectoderm, and we have surface ectoderm, which is essentially akin to skin. Let's just think about it as skin, surface ectoderm. So what happens is that at day 22, at around day 22, optic grooves will start to form. So we, this is step one, step two, step three. Let's keep it simple. What happens? The optic grooves continue to grow until they reach the surface ectoderm at around day 28. The grooves will become vesicles, and when they contact the surface ectoderm, it sets off this chain reaction that thickens the surface ectoderm, making it the lens placode, and triggers the formation of the lens. So what happens in the next stage is that the optic vesicle, where it was a single wall initially, will fold and form two walls. At the same time, the lens placode, which is surface ectoderm, differentiates, thickens, and digs in to the optic vesicle. What does this mean for eye embryology? Let's have a look over here. Over here we have the optic stalk and the optic cup. What is this from? This is from this. The optic vesicle will form the optic cup by folding on itself, forming a two-walled structure. The lens placode pinches in and eventually will form the lens. Let's only look at this week six optic cup for now. We will notice that the optic cup, where it was the optic vesicles, has two walls. And this is, let's just say, if we pull this out and place it here, this is what the optic cup will look like, looking at it this way. Through the middle, we have this choroid fissure. It's an empty space, the purpose of which is to allow the hyaloid artery to enter its destination and reach its destination to continue to provide sustenance to the 
eye, the, to the developing eye. Eventually, the choroid fissure will close off and fuse and only leave its tip open and that will form the pupil. All right, if we were to slice this optic cup right through here and look at it this way, and let's pull it here, this is what we'll have. We will have a choroid fissure here with a hyaline artery going right through it. We will have an inner layer and an outer layer. Inner layer and outer layer of what? Inner layer and outer layer of the retina. The outer layer is a pigmented layer and the inner layer is the neural layer and we will go into that in a moment. First, let's have a look at what happens in the eye development in week seven. So we have an eye, imagine you take my eye here, slice it in half and look at it this way. This is what we have if I was the week six, week seven uh, embryo. In blue, we still have ectoderm. That's all the surface ectoderm. This is the eyelid. We notice that the lens, where the, we had this lens placode pinching in, digging in, into this optic cup, you know, pinches off and becomes its own structure. So this being week seven, let's rewind back to week six. Focusing here. This view is looking at it like this. If I was to take this optic cup, cup and slice it this way. So let's cut this optic cup that way. Look this way. We will have this around week six. We notice surface ectoderm and the pinched off or dug in lens vesicle. The lens vesicle has its, gets its blood supply sustenance from the hyaloid artery. We notice in this view that we have an intraretinal space and this is only a temporary space that lies between the inner and outer layer. So between the two layers of the retina, the inner and outer layer. Okay, so let's go fast forward back to week seven. We have here the lens and how the lens develops is that from the posterior wall, fibers continue to grow anteriorly towards the front until it's filled with fiber, essentially, breaking it down simply. It gets filled and then the lens will be formed. What else do we have here? We have the retina, which has the inner layer, the neural layer, and the pigment layer on the outside. The optic nerve is on the furthermost inside of the, um, uh, of the retina. It's not part of the retina, but the, when we go through this, we will notice how all of the nerves of the whole eye go through the optic nerve over here. And if we focus right on this one from here, we will notice that this whole eye is encased in this mesenchyme where it's white. Everywhere that I haven't filled, it's mesenchyme. Now what mesenchyme is, it's a loose connective tissue that can become anything. So it can differentiate into whatever the eye needs. And what does that mean? So this eye is encased in tissues, cells all around it, which will develop into the various important structures that we will see here. So again, this is a slice looking at it this way. We have the conjunctival sac with further development of the surface ectoderm, the cornea in the front, which is also continuous with the sclera. We will notice that now we have a vitreous body and how that develops is that there is a gelatinous substance that infiltrates the eye into this intricate interstitial network, filling it up and becoming the vitreous body. The hyaline vessels will eventually degenerate, leaving behind a hyaline canal. In orange here, we have the neural layer. This is the neural layer, otherwise known as pars optica retina. At the most posterior aspect of the a neural layer, we have the rods and cones. These are your light sensing receptors. So the light enters this way and the nerves go that way. So when the light comes in through this way, 
it activates the rods and cones and then the electrical stimulus is sent back down so we have the first layer which is the rods and cones the second one which is the outer nuclear layer so that is the nucleus of the rods and cones and then there is the inner nuclear layer with the bipolar cells and then the final layer is the ganglion cells which have all of their nerve fibers going from the inner part of this eye where it's orange going to the optic nerve so the combination of all of these ganglion cell fibers will eventually form the optic nerve okay let's focus over here again let's talk about the mesenchyme there is both a posterior mesenchyme so the white bits like the loose tissue and a anterior mesenchyme the posterior mesenchyme has an inner layer which is continuous with the pia mater and that is the choroid vessels so the choroid vessels and it has an outer layer which is um, continuous with the dura mater and that will be the sclera so if we were actually going to make so this is the inner layer the vascular the choroid layer would be this one in red and then the outer layer would be the sclera here so for the posterior part the mesenchyme that's what it differentiates into however for the anterior part the this part of the eye the loose connective tissue that it was blank here will differentiate into other really important structures so one of them being the anterior chamber and how it was packed full of cells over here the anterior chamber is formed when these cells are hollowed out forming a chamber so this chamber sits in front of the lens and also more mesenchyme differentiates which will become the iridopupillary membrane which sits in front right here so it has both anterior and posterior chambers the aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary process now let's talk about the ciliary process ciliary body just over here let's zoom in and look over here this is the development of the ciliary process the sphincters and the ciliary muscles initially we have in or orange here this neuronal layer and then we have this layer on top and mesenchyme surrounding it the mesenchyme like we said the loose connective tissue the undifferentiated cells will differentiate into a sphincter pupilla the dilator pupilla and the ciliary muscles the ciliary process is what creates the aqueous humor uh, so the aqueous humor so if we're just looking over here coming back up we notice that the ciliary process is connected to the lens with the suspensory ligament and this is what controls contraction uh, of, uh, of the lens which will adapt to certain lights among other things notice again let's just go over what we just spoke about let's take this here zoom in we have the ciliary process here which is shown by the folding there is the pigment layer and the, the which is the outer layer of the retina and the inner layer of the retina which will become here on this side in the most anterior aspect the ciliary process where the aqueous humor is formed okay and as we grow we differentiate into the sphincter pupilla and the dilator pupilla and these are from ectoderm from the mesenchyme the undifferentiated cells will produce this type of tissue including the ciliary muscles thanks for watching my video i'm going to leave it at there there's a lot of high yield points but it's clearly not enough for a high level understanding of embryology of the eye this is just so that you get a great introduction to embryology so that you understand all of your lectures and your textbooks if you have any questions please shoot me a message on facebook i try to reply to them and also i've launched this patreon page it includes all of the 4k quality electronically drawn pictures of my summaries behind me and you get all these bunch of perks as well i don't care what tier you join you can contact me and i'll talk to you and we can do phone calls or whatever if you want uh, so yeah check that out it's patreon.com slash 
Dr. Minas with a DR, not a doctor written out. Okay, but if I read all of the comments that you leave below, I try and reply to most of them. I read every single one though. So please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. You can add me on Instagram at Minas. So it's at M1.NASS. If you have any other questions, shoot a message. You can literally send me stuff. You can do anything that you want. Just uh, get in contact with me. I would love to hear from you. All the best.